here. Because it, it's going to be an amazing day. Amen? It's, today I'm talking about the beauty that makes a difference. Tell your neighbor the beauty that makes a difference. And I want to let you know, the Bible says in Isaiah 60 verse 2, it says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. Listen, that's not news. That there's darkness all over the earth, that's not news. It says, and deep darkness the people. The fact that darkness covers people, that works around people, people being betrayed, let down, that's not news. But the scripture says, but the Lord. Tell your neighbor, but the Lord. It says, but the Lord will arise over you. Hallelujah. It says, and his glory will be seen upon you. His glory shall be seen. His beauty shall be seen upon you. So that means that it's not going to be darkness that people are going to see when they look at you. Amen? It's going to be his beauty. When men see you, when people see you, because the Lord has arisen over you, darkness won't be seen. Shout amen. amen. But you know what's going to be seen? His beauty. Say, God's beauty is working in my life. His beauty is manifesting in my life. And the devil works hard to make sure that people's lives are not beautiful. He works very hard to make sure that it is not beautiful. And he definitely works even harder to make sure that God's beauty does not reflect in people's lives. But when God's beauty manifests, guess what? There's no evidence of shame. There's no evidence of pain. There's no evidence of trauma. Amen? Because that's what his beauty, he literally erases all that was, un, that was, all that was done. Amen? And we're going to go to Ephesians 3 verse 19. I want to encourage you, get your Bibles, take your notes, and meditate on these scriptures. It says in Zephaniah 3 19, it says, behold, behold at that time, I will undo all that afflicts thee. Amen? He said, I will undo. Aren't you excited about that? He says, I will undo. I went to research what the word undo means. You know how it's defined? It says, I will cancel or reverse the effects of the results of a previous action. Isn't that amazing? So God is saying, he's saying, behold, at that time. And we just were praying that yesterday. Yesterday's prayer mounted. It says, your time, O oh Lord. It's now God's time. He's looking to manifest his beauty in our lives. He's looking to shine into our lives. Amen. He's looking to show the world what he's seen a long time ago. He's going to manifest the glory of Christ. So it says, behold, at that time, he says, I'm going to undo. And what does that word mean? He says, I'm going to cancel. I'm going to reverse the effects of the results of a past action or situation. So I don't know what it is that you're here today and you're saying, you know what? Years ago, maybe five years, ten years, one year, there were things that happened that you're not happy the way that it turned out. But God's word says, he says, at that time, which is now, he says, I will undo it all. Amen. Hallelujah. He says, I will undo all that afflicts thee. I will cancel it. I will reverse the effects of that situation. That choice, that decision that you're saying, oh man, I wish I never met that person. I wish I never married them. I wish I never went to that job. I wish I never moved. God's saying, I'm going to undo all of it. So that the cause, that the, that the effect will no longer be evident. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. Come on, clap for Jesus. Only he can do that. That's why we come to church and that's why we worship him. That's why that song just so ministered to me. It was saying dance, it was dance. You can only dance when you're able to rejoice. But dancing is a sign of, of belief, of faith, of knowing that things are different. If you ever look at sad people, they don't know how to shake it. They won't dance. They just wanna tell everybody how they're feeling. They just wanna spread what's happening. They won't celebrate, but when you're dancing, even in the midst of a situation, you're telling God, I believe. Because what is it that he can't do? There's literally nothing that he can't do. He brings the dead back to life. He restores the years that the, that the caterpillar, everything has eaten. So what is there that he cannot do? No matter how long it's been going on, what is he not able to do? That's why we come and we magnify him. That's why we exalt him. Because I'm going to undo all that afflict you. I'm going to cancel it. I'm going to reverse those effects. Maybe you're saying, you know what, I think I wasted you know, five, ten years on that decision, or I invested wrong, you know, I married wrong. Listen, it doesn't matter. When the beauty of the Lord comes upon you, everything is reversed in Jesus' name. All the effects, hallelujah. 
So that's why we can rejoice. Your life is going to be like a dream. Amen. And that's what Psalms 126 verse 1 says. He says, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, he says, we were like those that dream. And the Amplified said, you know what it said? It says, it seems so unreal. What a testimony. The way, when God's beauty works in your life, when his beauty works in your life, it seems so unreal. When things start changing, it seems so unreal. You know, I'd share a testimony when we first started our marriage. It was rough. It was rocky. But there's so many days that when Pastor Neva were doing something, we look back and we're like, it seems so unreal. The fighting, the pain, the sleeping on the couch, you know, all, all those fun things that come with the, you know, the newness of marriage and the two becoming one. You know, it sounds beautiful, but it's really, it's really intense. If you ever blended a smoothie and you're throwing all those fruits in and you're just mixing in the smoothie, that's not beautiful. But what comes out is beautiful, right? So the joining sometimes can be challenging, but what comes out is beautiful. The Bible says he makes everything beautiful in his time. So when God is finished with every one of us, it's actually going to be so unreal. Tell your neighbor, are you ready? Hallelujah. Say, God's beauty will make it that our lives are unrecognizable, that it's like a dream, that it's like unreal in Jesus' name. And that's what his beauty does. It says that they were like those that dreamed. It seemed unreal. The type of testimonies as a church that we are walking into, it is going to feel unreal. And I hope you can sense it. Minister Eb and I were talking yesterday. We could just, there's something in the atmosphere. You can feel it. it. You can feel it. It's like when you look at the clouds and you can see it's getting all cloudy and that you can see the rain's about to drop. It's the same thing. Like it's not the same season as last year. It's, there's something that's brewing. And we want every person to be a part of it. You can feel it in the air. You can feel it. God is about to do things in our life that literally will be like a dream. When we look back, when we look back at 2023 and we will see, we're like, oh, I can't believe that was us. I can't believe we were struggling here. I can't believe we were doing that. I can't believe my marriage looked like that. That's what his beauty does. That is one of the, and today I'm talking about the impact of beauty because it's real. Thank God for natural beauty, but it fades. Natural beauty, it fades. And many people that don't have that revelation, they're spending their money, they're spending their time trying to revive that beauty that's already fading. It's inevitable. To be honest, if you're 80 looking like 20, it's just not natural. There's just, it doesn't look good. Just age gracefully. You know, just age gracefully. But if there's a 90-year-old that has a face of a 20-year-old, I'm going to be scared, to be honest. Because the arms are not going to match the face, right? So it's, it's, it's just allow God's beauty. Because even when you're 90, you'll still be beautiful when you allow God's beauty to work inside of you. So I'm talking about four impacts of beauty. Number one, it restores. Say restores. Number two, it prevents spoilers from damaging your natural beauty and your function. That's so important. Number three, it causes you to flourish. And number four, it settles and establishes you. So I'm going to be going through them. The first thing that beauty does is it restores, say restores. So there's no time. You don't have to cry about what didn't happen or you don't like the way things happen. God's beauty restores. And that's why this month and months moving forward, I want you to celebrate the beauty of the Lord because it literally has the power to change everything. It literally had, no matter what you're going through right now, just know that God's beauty can turn it around. Doesn't matter how long it's been going on. Doesn't matter how dark it seems to look. It doesn't matter how impossible that it seems. That's why I started with Isaiah 60. It says, darkness shall cover the earth. Deep darkness the people but the Lord. It's what you depend, what you choose to focus on. Some people focus on the darkness that's covering the earth and the people. Or you can focus on, but the Lord will arise over you. His glory, his beauty shall be seen over you. And that has to be our confession every single day. So his beauty, it restores. And that's why we're encouraging everyone, come to the house, come to church, come to prayer mountain, come on Wednesdays, come to the house, come to the sanctuary. Because we want every person to be a partaker of it. It's not reserved for one or two people. It's reserved for everyone. If you're here in this assembly, God has said, now is the time that I'm going to beautify your life. You're a part of that prophecy. You're a part of what God is speaking. 
So he has some things in your life that he's looking forward to turning it around, but we have to partner with him. We have to respond to the word. We have to respond to prophecy. There are many prophecies that have been released, that have been spoken, but nothing happens because there's a response. And Papa taught that years ago. You have to respond back to the word. It's not enough just to hear the word, to hear the word, but what are you doing with the word? Ask your neighbor, what are you doing with the word? And we have to not only hear it, but we got to declare it. We got to speak over it. Let me go to uh, Psalms 90, verse 17. Because I love the NIV, the NIV part of this, the NLT, sorry, the latter part. He says, he makes our efforts successful. Yes, makes our efforts successful. That's what God's beauty does. His beauty upon the works of your hands, it makes your efforts successful. Not everyone's effort is successful. Not everyone's works are successful. Psalms 90 verse 17, it says, and let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of your hands, yea, the work of your hands. And the NLT says, make your efforts successful. That's what God's beauty does. He makes your work successful. He makes your home successful. He makes your relationships successful, the efforts. That's why it's not wisdom to move forward without the Lord. We want to know what he has to say because he's the one that's making it successful. Amen? So the first thing is that his beauty restores. Number two is that his beauty, it prevents glory spoilers and stealers. Listen, there are forces that are trying to steal your beauty. We learned about that on Wednesday. There are, sin tries to steal. If you ever see people, you know, dabbling into sin as they age, they're not really aging gracefully. There's some of the celebrities and things you see them and you just watch them age and you're wondering what happened to that person years ago. It's like they, they, you know, like the decay is just so much and you're wondering what happened. It's sin. And one thing with sin is you can never play with, you can't play with it because it always comes to collect. I remember before when I was struggling with my own struggles, I remember Papa, he was like, listen, sin is like a baby tiger. And he's like, you can play with the baby tiger, but eventually one day the tiger is going to grow up and he's going to destroy you. And so some people, they play with sin at a, at a young level thinking, oh, wow, you know, you try it and you're like, oh, I'm not dead. Okay, let me continue. Oh, I went to that party and uh, my business is still doing okay. And they, it creates an illusion that, oh, it's not a big deal. No, 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 it's growing. And that's for the young people. You're just thinking, oh, I can do whatever you want. No, it's growing. When you're ready to really serve the Lord, that's when it's like, boom, gotcha. And you're like, oh, all those years, all those things, it comes to collect. So that's why the people that are, you know, that are before you in faith, they're telling you, don't do that. It's deceiving. It's going to try to lead you in a way. It's, it's a lie from the devil. The devil likes to lie into deceives. So there are spoilers and there's damages of natural beauty and natural function. And I just wrote here, Papa wrote something. He said, this beauty of the Lord covers our destiny errors. It covers our faults, our weaknesses, stains, our blemishes in order for us to still shine in places of shame and rejection. Amen. That's what his beauty does. It covers destiny mistakes. It covers our faults. His beauty covers our weaknesses. It covers blemishes so that we can still shine. We can still shine. It says that in the place where you were put to shame, that same place, God will get you praise and he will get you fame. He says, I will get you praise and fame. Zephaniah 319, the latter part of what I was reading, he says, I will get you praise and fame in the land that you have been put to shame. Amen? Amen. So it doesn't matter what's happened. It doesn't matter the shame. It doesn't matter. God says, I will give you praise and I will give you fame. Hallelujah. Because of his beauty that is working in your life. So that's the second thing. He prevents beauty spoilers. He, prefer, he prevents glory spoilers. Things that are trying to destroy your life and make it ugly. That's what God's beauty attacks. Number three is that his beauty causes you to flourish. Say, I'm flourishing. By the beauty of the Lord, I am flourishing. All the works of my hands, they are flourishing in Jesus' name. 
And so you declare that every day. If you have a business, declare that. By the beauty of the Lord, the works of my hands are, are, are flourishing. Declare the word. We're going to go to Zechariah 9, verse 17. The greatness of his beauty delivers corn and new wine to you. What does that mean? What is corn and new wine? It means prosperity. It means joy. It means settlement. So that's what his beauty delivers to you. Prosperity. The world is looking for all these things, but they don't realize that everything is wrapped up in God. So you don't have to spend your time and, you know, all these like vain efforts and do all those things. The Bible says that, you know, the, the labor of a man, of a fool, sorry, it wearies him because he doesn't know how to enter the city. There are many people who their work, their labor is wearying them. They're getting tired. They're getting burnt out. They can't seem to make it to the finish line because they don't know what they're doing. But God's beauty literally will lead you. He will open up doors for you. He will cause people to like you, and it doesn't even make sense. Those are the type of testimonies expect to hear when people just like you just because. It's his beauty. They just like you. I, remember, and I was thinking, God brought this back to my mind. It was many years ago, but one of the jobs, I used to be really no, nervous when I go and, and you know, want to be hired. I was really young, and I remember going to an interview, and, and this guy, he was just smiling, and, you know, I said all the, you know, the questions, he was just smiling, and, and I was like, okay, and he's like, all right, you're hired, and I was surprised because I was very timid, right? And I'm like, oh, wow, thank you, and he's like, you know what? I didn't hear anything you said. He's like, but all I kept thinking is, you look like my sister, and I was like, Okay, he's like, you just remind me of my little sister. He's like, I just like you. So he hired me because I look like his sister. Hallelujah. So it wasn't my effort. And it's funny, the Lord just brought that back as I was meditating this morning. I was like, wow, like, it wasn't anything I said. It wasn't anything I'd done. In fact, in natural ability, I was nervous. I wasn't shining in my own skill because I was timid. And he was smiling, and I remember thinking, I'm like, why is he smiling like that? And all he could say is, and, and as I continue to work for him, every time I'd see him, he's like, you look like my sister. You look like my sister. He's like, I love my sister. You look like my baby sister. He just couldn't stop. But it was favor. It, it was God helping me. That's what favor does. When I, as soon as you hear, they're like, I don't normally do this. We learned that from the favor clinic. Well, you know, listen, they're about to do something they've never done before. And it is going to be in your favor. That's what you're trying to hear. Oh, I don't normally do this. It's okay. Because of God's beauty, his favor, it's going to get done today. Why? Because I'm set apart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Minister Ake was praying. He's like, Lord, because he just prayed this day. He's like, Lord, because I've distinguished you. Thank you for distinguishing me. When we set God, when we put him where he belongs, which is above anything, above any situation, when we put him up there, when we distinguish him and we esteem him and we say, God, I'm giving you the honor, God will now give it back to you. He will put you in places that it doesn't make sense. My mom shared her testimony, going to be a professor at the school. It doesn't make sense. To be honest, when she, told, when she told us, she texted me and I texted her, I was like, you know, was it a dream? <laughs> And because sometimes we have these crazy dreams, and when we wake up, we just text each other, oh, guess what happened yesterday? We were traveling around the world, and this was a dream, right? So we have this, like, kind of joke. So then I told Pastor David, I'm like, guess what? My mom got hired to work at Canada Christian College. He's like, was that her dream? We both said the same thing. We thought it was a dream because it is a dream. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's celebrate God. It doesn't make sense. Even when she was going to the school, she's like, I don't know why I'm here. I've, I'm overschooled. She's like, I don't know why I'm here. But her being there connected her to some people so that now she's there. And I literally, and I screenshotted the academic calendar. It says Professor Lori Julian. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's a testimony of God's beauty. Do you think it was a mistake that it happened in this month? Do you think it's a mistake that happened in this month? No. Let that testimony be a pointer to your life. What are things that you said I would never hear? To be honest, I never thought that would happen. I'm not going to lie. But it, he's doing something that seems so unreal. That's the, you know, one of the beginning of the many testimonies. Tap into that the same way that we thought it was a dream. The same way that we were like, Lord, is this really real? Tap into that. So then the next week when you come to testify, we'll be like, is that a, was that a dream? 
What this person testified, was that a dream? Hallelujah, because he's able to do that. He is able, that's what he does with our life. He makes it beautiful. Can someone say, thank you, Lord. You make our lives beautiful. Hallelujah. And that's what even Sanash knew. She know, you know how she's saying, you make my life so beautiful. She knew something, hallelujah. And as you are, you have made me here on earth. There's nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forevermore. Come on, sing it again. He makes our life beautiful. That's our testimony. You make my life so beautiful. And as you are, you have made me here on earth. There's nothing greater than this. That's why I love you forevermore. Come on, sing it again. He makes our life. Just think of that area. You make my life so beautiful. And as you are, hallelujah. And as you are, you have made me here on earth. There's nothing greater than this. That's why I love you. That's why I love you. Forevermore. Forevermore. I want more of you. I want more of you. It's the Lord. Sir, he is the key. I want more of you. Just cry out more for him. The more we know him. I want more of you. Fill me with more of you. Let your beauty radiate my life. The more I know you, the more I want to know. The more I know of you, the more I know of you. The more I want to know. The more I know of you. Oh yes, the more I want to know of you, Jesus. Psalms 27 verse 4 he says one thing have I desired of the Lord that I will seek after to behold the beauty of the Lord so let's just pray just lift your voice and say Lord I want to behold more of your beauty I want to behold more ask him ask him he says ask it shall be given say Lord I want to behold your beauty oh, thank you Lord hallelujah yes Lord thank you Lord declare it let express your desire for him yes Lord oh Father Lord we desire more of you we desire your beauty Lord we want to see it oh God oh Lord we desire it oh God we desire it oh Lord we ask oh Lord that we will behold more of your beauty oh God we behold more of your beauty oh God Lord we desire it oh Lord we desire you, oh Lord, my soul, oh Father, we thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.